In wartime, women have always had to sacrifice their dearest treasure, their children. Mrs. Talalikin is proud of her son. He has just won the title of Hero of the Soviet Union by ramming a Nazi bomber over Moscow. She is telling us how she heard the news while in an air raid shelter and then suddenly realized, why, that's my son. Happy the country with such sons and such mothers. Women from the factories, women from the farms enlist into the Soviet ATS. Hundreds of thousands trained to be military nurses to go to the front. Drugs, stored blood and medical supplies can go to the front line in planes. A special corps of parachute nurses learns jumping so that they can bring relief to any sector. This parachutist you see jumping here is a woman nurse. Throughout the Union of Socialist Soviet Republics, thousands of meetings were held at the outset of the war to call upon every woman to make herself available for industry. Every man at the front needs ten pairs of hands to equip and sustain him. That is the message of total war to women. And millions of women obeyed this call. Outside the threatened towns, they helped to build fortifications and anti-tank traps. They redirected rivers to form tank barriers. They set up artificial ravines and breastworks. But behind the tank barriers, there lay the vast and fertile grain fields with crops waiting to be reaped. The men are gone to the front. The enemy is approaching. The job has to be done by women. Millions of women bought in the harvest of 1941. All over the USSR, schools for women tractor drivers sprang up. To the Soviet peasant girl of today, a tractor is no unfamiliar sight. But to know how to drive and service one, this hundreds of thousands had to learn from skilled teachers. There's a thrill of knowledge that one is doing something useful in driving the big machine alone for the first time. Ivan Gubov instructs his wife how to take his place at the wheel of the combine. He can go to the front now with the knowledge that his job will be well done. In every factory, schools were opened for women workers. Here, they could learn how to take up a post at lathe or bench. And when they got into the workshop, they soon pick it up. Here is Semyon Belkin, teaching a beginner. The skilled men left in the shop pass on the tricks of the trade as rapidly as possible. The girl who is learning here, although such a youngster, is a mother, married to a soldier at the front. When such women enter industry, caring for their children becomes a problem. Many factory creches already existed in the Soviet Union. Others had to be started by the initiative of the new women workers themselves. In this creche, elder children do their bit by looking after the littlest ones. Here, in the calm and quiet, sleeps young Ivan, while his mother works as a welder in the hubbub of a tank factory. Indeed, there are few jobs, even in heavy industry, that Soviet women do not fill. They have exactly equal standing with the men, the same pay for the same job, the same full membership of each appropriate trade union. In an industry run on modern lines, there is much more need for skill and intelligence than for physical strength. Eva Balabanova holds down a key job. 
She is getting 120% of the output of her predecessor, himself a shop worker. Not only production jobs are filled by women, but research and designing as well. Indeed, the way lies open to Soviet women for jobs of every kind. Trains on the Moscow underground are often run by a full staff of women. Women train drivers and women crane drivers. Natasha Popova is successfully operating a derrick in one of the vital harbors. Through her hands pass shipments of all sorts, foodstuffs today, tomorrow maybe, arms and munitions from Britain or the USA. The towns and the villages, the homes of many a family have gone up in smoke before the advance or as a result of the incendiary bombs of the invader. Women must be first in the fight against the fires. How wait for the men when the men are fighting? Many fire squads are manned and commanded entirely by women. But even this is not enough. It is not enough to try to put out the fire when the danger is already on us. Defense is not enough. Hit back, that's the answer. Thousands of Soviet women are working the machines. Thousands beside their men folk harry the enemy's rear. Others stand steadfast at the front. Here today in Britain is one of them, Claudia Nikolaeva, secretary of the Central Council of Soviet Trade Unions, with a message for you. Women of Britain and delight, greeting our air force must grow. Also, our friendship in peace as in war. Hitler is doomed. Long live our victories.